Welcome, time for some art fun. Today, we're going to paint some fuzzy little bears and talk about art in the flow state. So stick around. The other day, I painted this little bear cub climbing a tree in my Pentallic 5x5 watercolor sketchbook. And that led to me painting this little fuzzy bear in that same sketchbook. And then I was sort of on a roll and I wanted to paint some more bears, but this time in my giant Etcher Lab sketchbook with different materials right at my art desk instead of, you know, traveling around. And so I did a quick background of a mix of actually acrylic white paint and ink, some blue ink, and used that as a background for this fuzzy bear that I wanted to paint with my Turner acryl wash. And as I was painting this bear and then the next bear that we'll also be painting in this video, I had my music playing and I was entering the flow state and I realized I've never talked to you all about the flow state and how I get there with my art. And it's such a huge part of why I am so motivated to get into my studio and to paint every day that I couldn't believe I've had this channel for as long as I have and we've grown as much as we have this year and never talked about this concept. So I wanted to talk to you about it today and I'm really looking forward to the conversation and the comments about this because I feel like it's one of those things that a lot of art channels don't necessarily get into. It's kind of a crossover between the physical act that we're doing with art where we're moving our brush across the page and we're using our eyeballs to judge color and values. It feels like a very physical experience to me but the flow state is what integrates it with the psychological. So before I get too deep, I wanna make sure we all know what I'm talking about. So there's this book called Flow, and I'm actually gonna put a little screenshot of it, but Flow, the Psychology of Optimal Experience. I cannot pronounce the author's name, so I'm just gonna put it up here on the screen. But just straight from the back of the book, it talks about how this legendary psychologist's famous investigations of optimal experience have revealed that what makes an experience genuinely satisfying is a state of consciousness called flow. And he just looks into different examples of people who are experiencing deep enjoyment, creativity, and total involvement with their life in a given moment. And if you think about your own life, what are those moments when you are totally involved in the present, where you are not worrying about something that happened in the past, chastising yourself for something you said or did wrong, up to 10, 20 years ago, I know I do that all the time, <laughs> or you know, worrying about what's gonna happen tomorrow or next week or this assignment that you just got, whatever. When are you really deeply enjoying the moment that you're in? And often the people who would be interviewed or in these investigations, the people would be talking about the way that they felt and it's something that could be called reaching or achieving a flow state. I've reached a flow state while singing, while writing music, while doing art, of course, a lot, uh, but also while working. So when I would be drafting long documents or in trial, I'm a lawyer, and so when I would be in trial and arguing in trial, now I'm a mediator. So when I'm talking to people about working their problems out themselves, I will be completely and utterly involved in the moment to the point that I'll forget to go to the bathroom, I'll forget to drink water, I'll forget to eat. I have to have little buzzers ding to remind me <laughs> to go do those things, basic human things, and so it doesn't become an emergency. So you don't realize you have to take a drink of water when you're just hopefully can't talk because your mouth is so dry. <laughs> so I'm wondering for you all, if you achieve that flow state when you're doing art, I will tell you that now that I'm better at art and it's more likely that I'm going to achieve a result when I'm painting or drawing that I actually like in the end, I'm finding it much easier to get into that flow state where you're completely involved in the moment, you're enjoying everything about the moment, you're completely losing time. For me, the, the concept of losing time where you just look up and it's dark out and you didn't even realize that hours had passed while you were doing an activity, that's the biggest sign to me that I'm in a flow state, that I've achieved it. Obviously, the concept involves a deep level of satisfaction and enjoyment of the activity that you are doing, and it tends to be focused around productive work when you're working on something and you're challenging yourself and you're pushing yourself to your limits or beyond and you enjoy that process as a human, that there's something about productive work that's actually very enjoyable. 
And it really hits me a lot now that I have social media again. I only have social media because of having this art channel. <laughs> I didn't have it before I got off of it pretty early in my career. So, you know, almost 15 years ago and didn't get back on until I had this channel and wanted a place to sort of interact with you all aside from just YouTube. So mostly Instagram is where I'm active. And on Instagram is where I'm exposed to the sort of anti-work culture, the anti-traditional work, I guess is really what it is, the anti-cubicle, um, corporate meetings type <laughs> work, and a lot of focus on the hustle and self-employed culture that is much more prevalent now, the, the side hustle that becomes your main job, which I'm totally for and love. I love the idea of self-employment and doing your own thing and creating your own niche in the market. Niche, nit niche, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so obviously, because here I am doing this, so I'm very into that and I think that's really cool. But I worry sometimes that people aren't finding that, finding that work that they really love, that they find satisfying. So I'm just going to show you here, by the way, I finished the little fuzzy bear. I actually posted on Instagram to ask you if you thought he was done because I thought maybe he needed some more details like around his little paws, but you all loved him the way he was. So I left him and then I thought he needed a little house to scrounge around. And so I made him a house that he could live near. And then I wanted to do yet another bear <laughs> again. And this all started with the first two bears and just really enjoying painting these fuzzy little creatures, bear cubs in particular. And it's bringing me joy. Is it work? I mean, it's hard. It's hard to paint and create something that you really enjoy looking at. It's hard to make a product that you are proud of. And when I say product, I mean literally the end result of a productive activity, not a product like sunscreen. Do you know what I mean? But like the product of your efforts. This little fuzzy bear is the product of my painting efforts. It's a funny thing to think of it as a product, but that is anything that you produce, you've created a product. So whether or not you choose to monetize or sell that product is a whole other question. It has nothing to do with whether or not you were productive. And I think the effort at being productive, at creating something, at looking down at something that you brought into existence, whether it's a little fuzzy bear like this or the house next to him, or whether it's a novel, whether it's an argument that you make to a judge, whether it's a diagnosis of someone's condition, whether it's, you know, going and helping someone and holding their hand while they're dying, working as a hospice nurse. I mean, there's a million different things that people do and they're being productive and they can feel really proud of their product that they're creating, of what they're producing. And again, totally separate from whether or not it's monetized or how it's monetized or whether it's your job that you're paid for or whether it's just something that you do because you love to create that thing. And I hope for everyone that they are able to get into that state and start to feel that way about whatever it is that they're creating, whatever it is that they're producing, whatever it is that they put their productive energy towards where they are pushing themselves to their limits. It's why I admire people like David Goggins, who is like one of the most amazing ultra marathoners. He has an amazing, amazing book called Can't Hurt Me, Master Your Mind and Defy the Odds. It is one of the most amazing, interesting, challenging autobiographies you'll ever read. I highly recommend that book. It is so cool. And it's amazing what he's done with his life. And you have to admire people like that. You have to just sit back and say, wow, look what they've made of themselves. Look what they've made of life. And it's one of those things where when you see it, you want to rise. It's like you want to achieve more too. And that's certainly something that I feel when I watch people like Sarah Burns studio here on YouTube or Sandy Hester with how prolific she is or Melanie Chadwick with her outdoor art. She does plein air art and it's amazing what she puts together and how you can see her vision of the world around her in this beautiful area in the UK that she lives. And I hope that there's some of that that I'm bringing for you all where I'm inspiring you to use your materials to get out your sketchbooks, to get out your painting supplies and get in there and make stuff. And I have to tell you when I was first starting and I wasn't more likely to create a result that I was going to appreciate and enjoy looking at at the end of painting, it was definitely harder. It was definitely slower to get into a flow state. It was, it was not likely that I was going to get there. It wasn't likely that I was going to be able to just hunker down and feel like I'm flying and feel like I'm just losing time because time is flying by with how happy and content I am and how exciting it is 
to create and to make something appear on a blank page. I mean, it is a very, <laughs> there's a reason that that's almost its own metaphor that people use all the time. And that's actually what we're doing when we're creating art. And it goes wrong. And even just certain areas of a painting will go wrong. Like here between these little paws, I wish I'd left that light instead of choosing to make the tree darker than the bear. I wish I'd chosen to make the front of the tree closer to the bear lighter than the bear. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with this piece. And that's how it tends to go now, where I still have a lot to learn. I still have a lot that I'm improving on. But overall, I'm going to be probably happy with what I create. And in the first year or so, it wasn't like a given. It was always a surprise. Every time I made something that I liked, it was a surprise. But eventually I started getting into that flow state more and more. And then you chase it and you want to get there more and more. And I'm assuming that's what marathon runners feel. I have never gotten to a flow state with running. I can barely run one minute long. But I see people who do that, especially ultra marathon runners who do like 100 mile races, 50 mile races, 130 mile races. And I feel like they must be getting there. They must be losing time. They must be lost in the achievement that they're creating. And so I'd love to know in the comments if you have ever achieved that flow state that I'm talking about when you're making art. And if not when you're making art, then is there anything that you do in your life where you get to feel that way, where you get to just lose time and lose yourself in whatever the productive activity is that you're engaged in? And how do you feel about it? Do you chase it? Do you love it? Or have you never experienced it and you have no idea what I'm talking about? I'll be really interested to see what the comments are on this particular video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment because I'm really going to be watching like a hawk. I want to know what you guys think. Until next time, remember, create something cute.